Hello Codets, I welcome you all. In this video, we are going to discuss auto logging in MLflow. Before that, as you can see here, we have logged matrix, parameters, confusion matrix, model and code so far, right? Now let's track and log the data sets used in our code. After that, we will discuss auto logging in MLflow. Let's move to our code. So as you can see, we are using two data sets, one for training and one for testing. So we will log both of these data sets. As you might know, we set up a remote tracking server for MLflow using DAXUP in the last video. So I am going to update the same code that we wrote in the last video. For simplicity, we are going to use a local tracking server instead of a remote tracking server of MLflow. But you can use a remote tracking server as well in the same way. So let's start with how to log data sets using ML flow. You can see this is the code that we have updated in the last video. So now first of all, let's create new Python file water underscore data set dot pi. You can give any other name as well. Now let's select this code. Let's copy this code and let's paste this code in our newly created Python file. So as I said, for simplicity, we are going to use a local tracking server of MLflow instead of a remote tracking server MLflow. But you can use a remote tracking server as well. But in this video, we are going to use a local tracking server of MLflow. So first, let's comment this statement and this statement as well. So as you know, we have used these statements to set up a remote tracking server of MLflow on DAXUP. So that's why here I am commenting these statements. Now let's set set underscore tracking URI to local host HTTP 127.0.0.1 and 5000 port number. Let's save our code. So as we discussed, we used two data sets that you can see over here. One for training and one for testing. So we need to log both the data sets. So as you can see here, we are going to log two data sets that we have used one for training and one for testing. So please remember to log a data set using MLflow. We need to perform two steps. As you can see here first, in the first step, we need to convert our data sets to a format that MLflow accepts. Don't you worry, I will show you this practically. Now let's move to our second step. In the second step, we log them using the MLflow dot log underscore input statements that we will discuss shortly. But please remember to log a data set using MLflow. We need to perform these two steps. First, we need to convert our data sets to a format that MLflow accepts. In second step, we log them using the MLflow dot log underscore input statement. Don't you worry. Shortly, I will show you this practically. So now let's move to VS code. So you can see our code. As you know, we have logged metrics like accuracy, precision, recall and F1 score. Also, these two parameters of random forest classifier that you can see over here. Our random forest classifier. Also, we have logged confusion metrics that you can see over here. Also, we have logged our model random forest classifier. Also, we have logged our code. And also we have set these two tags in our last video. So now let's log our data set. So as we discussed, we required two steps. If we want to log our data set using ML flow. So now let's complete our first step. We are going to convert our data sets to a format that ML flow accept. So here let me write ML flow dot data dot from underscore pandas and here let me copy this for our training data and let's paste over here and let's assign it to one variable train underscore df is equal to this statement let's copy this statement and let's paste it over here same for test data as well let's assign it to test test underscore df let's save our file you can see that we have converted the data set into a format acceptable to ML flow using these two lines one for training data and one for testing data that you can see over here. 
So we have completed this particular step. We need to convert our data sets to a format that MLflow accepts. Now let's move on to our second step and let's log our data sets using this particular statement MLflow dot log underscore input statement. Let's move to VS code. Let's move down and after this we have to write MLflow dot log underscore input to log our data set train underscore df this one so here we are logging training data same we have to do for testing data as well again let's move down and here we have to give context train let's copy this statement let's paste it over here same we have to do for test data as well and let's give context test let's save our file before we run this particular code let's open mlflow ui first using following command mlflow space ui let's press enter you can see mlflow server serving on this particular uri let's press follow link you can see over here now let's back to vs code and here let's create new cell and let's run our code using following command water underscore data set dot pi that just we have created let's press enter as you can see we can run our code success fully now let's move to mlflow ui and let's refresh this page you can see over here our experiment let's click on this and you can see over here and the main thing that you can see over here is data set if you observe carefully Previously, these data sets were not there. Here, MLflow UI is showing these data sets because we have logged these data sets explicitly using following command that you can see over here. MLflow dot log underscore input. That's why MLflow is showing this. Let's click on this particular run name. You can see over here details, run ID duration and again here you can see data sets used and here two parameters that we have logged and matrix accuracy f1 score precision and recall and also you can see tax as well that we have set now but currently we are interested in data set so let's click over here data sets used you can see over here test data and train data and it is showing column names that you can see over here. These are our independent variables and this is our dependent variable portability that you can see over here. In training set, let's click on test set. You can see over here. Same for test set as well. So you can see that we have logged almost everything including matrix, parameters, confusion matrix, the model, code and data sets as well. This makes it much easier to reproduce experiments that you can see over here. Let me show you one more time. As you can see here, here we have logged parameters used by our random forest classifier and matrix accuracy, F1 score, precision and recall. And here you can see model matrix. Now let's move to artifacts as you can see over here. Our model requirements.txt, confusion matrix, and code that you can see over here. So we have logged almost everything matrix, parameters, confusion matrix, model that you can see over here, code that also you can see here, and our data sets as well train data and test data. As I said, this makes it much easier to reproduce experiments because we have logged almost everything. Hope all of you are clear with this. How to log matrix, parameters, confusion matrix, model, code and data sets using MLflow. So now let's move on and discuss auto logging in MLflow. Let's jump to MLflow page for automatic logging that you can see over here. Auto logging is a powerful feature that allows you to log matrix, parameters and models without the need for explicit log statements. All you need to do is to call this particular statement mlflow.autolog 
before your train code like this. That's all. As you can see in our code, we wrote explicit statements to log everything like matrix, accuracy, precision, recall and F1 score, model parameters, N estimators and max depth. Also confusion matrix. Here we are logging model, code file, here data sets, training and test data and also we have set text that you can see over here. So here we wrote explicit statements to log particular thing. But as I said, MLflow also offers automatic logging support. So we not required to write these explicit statements like this. That also you can see here. So let's move on. As you can see, this will enable MLflow to automatically log various information about your run, including metrics, parameters, model signature, artifacts and data set without writing explicit statements. Just we have to write this particular statement mlflow.autolog. Let me show you this practically. Let's move to VS code. So let's first create new Python file with name water underscore auto dot pi and let's copy this code that we just wrote and let's paste it over here. So now let's perform our first step. Let's first remove all the explicit logging statements that we have mentioned over here. Let's remove this. Also this, all these statements. Also this as well. I think all done. We have removed all the explicit logging statements. Let's save our code. And as we discussed, we have to add this particular statement mlflow dot auto log that's all all done and you can see I have added above this particular statement mlflow dot start underscore run that you can see over here and for better understanding let's change experiment name as well so this statement will create new experiment if this particular experiment is not available right so now let's clear this and let's run our code water underscore auto dot pi. Also, please don't forget to save this file done. Now let's execute this particular file. Let's press enter. You can see auto logging successfully enabled for SK learn that you can see over here. Now done. You can see we can run our experiment successfully. Now let's move to MLflow UI and you can see over here new experiment that just we have created. Let's click on this and you can see over here our first run. Let's click on this run. You can see over here details and you can see over here data set and you can see these tags are generated automatically by ML flow and you can see over here log models and now main part parameters that you can see over here ML flow by default log all the parameters of random forest classifier that you can see over here around 19 parameters that you can see over here and matrix you can see over here accuracy underscore score underscore x underscore test f1 underscore score underscore x underscore test likewise that you can see over here let's move to model matrix that you can see over here now let's move to rt facts you can see over here ML model, conda.yml, our model requirements.txt. You can see over here metric underscore info that you can see over here training confusion matrix, training underscore precision underscore recall curve that you can see over here, training underscore ROC curve that you can see over here. And as you know, we can download these artifacts by clicking on this particular button that you can see over here. So you can see that auto logging has logged everything right that you can see over here data sets as well. And as I said, these tags are generated automatically that you can see over here by ML flow. So you can see we not required to write explicit logging statements that you can see over here. But if you can observe properly, sometimes it increases complexity because it locks everything that you can see over here. 
even when we don't need it that you can see over here. So many times it better to use explicit logging statements so we can log the things according to our requirements, right? Otherwise, as per your requirements, you can use auto logging or explicit logging statements. Let's move to our experiment. Let's click on the run and let's move to artifacts. One thing you might have noticed is that the code is not logged. Right, so auto logging in MLflow does not log the code. So please remember auto logging in MLflow does not log the code. So we need to write explicit statement to log the code manually. Let me show you this. Let's move to VS code and let's move down. And here let me write MLflow dot log underscore artifact underscore underscore file underscore. Let's save our code. Let's clear this and let's execute our file. Now let's move to MLflow UI. Let's refresh it once. Let's click on this run. Let's move to artifacts. Now you can see over here. We can able to log code as well. Please remember auto logging in MLflow does not log the code. So we need to write explicit statement to log the code manually this statement, right? Hope all of you are clear with this. So as we discussed, you can download any artifacts by clicking on this particular button download artifact, right? Hope all of you are clear with how to log a data set and how to perform auto logging in MLflow. Hope you like this video. Please don't forget to subscribe this channel. If you like this video, smash that like button.